Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we will talk about how to create that perfect flat wash. Flat washes are used when creating background skies and they look especially beautiful when painting a sunset scenery. This may seem simple and easy to achieve, but many beginners still struggle with this. And in this video, I'm going to walk you through what you can do to avoid your mistakes and start painting some beautiful flat washes for those gorgeous skies. There are two main reasons why a flat wash can go wrong. So let me give an example. I start off by laying out the paints and the number one mistake is using a brush that is too small for such a large area. I have to keep going back to my palette to reload more paints and as certain part of the paper dries, we start to see dry and harsh brush strokes appearing. Now my paints on my palette start to run out and that's mistake number two, not preparing enough paints. When a second batch of mix is made, it is usually hard to know if the second batch has the same amount of concentration and dilution as the first batch and this causes inconsistency in the entire wash. As you could tell, my second mix ended up being more diluted than the first wash. So to fix this, I had to quickly go over and work my way back upwards to even out the entire wash. For the second time again, my mix has already run out and prepping this third batch gave me a more concentrated and saturated section as compared to the previous wash. Another reason why it's best to avoid preparing your mix mid-painting is that it can get pretty time consuming and while we are running with time, the paints start to dry and it becomes difficult to blend the previous strokes with a fresh new paint resulting in harsh areas. And the result we get is an inconsistent rough wash. So the right way to do this is to use big brushes. Here I have three different brushes. You may use a big round brush. I have with me here is a size 12 round sable brush. Otherwise, any big brushes that has a mix of natural hair is good. As compared to synthetic hair, natural hair has the ability to soak up a large amount of water and hence is ideal for painting large washes. The second brush I have here is a 1 inch flat synthetic brush and I'll talk more on how I use this brush later. And my favourite go-to brush for large washes would be this Hague brush. Hague brush is made of good hair bristles. This brush is very thirsty for water and it can cover a huge area with a good amount of moisture just in one stroke. And as you can see, they are very soft and easy to bend as compared to the synthetic brush which is more rigid and snaps back quickly. Next, prepare a large amount of paints on your palette. The bigger your area, the more paints you will need to prepare. If the paints on the palette run out like we seen earlier, you'll need to spend extra time making more paints and might end up with a wash with different dilutions and consistency. And by the time we are ready to continue, the paints would already have dried out and we would risk creating harsh strokes. So once we have these two mistakes avoided, let's talk about the techniques. There are two ways in creating a flat wash. There's the wet on dry and wet on wet. First, let's take a look on wet on dry. Wet on dry technique means to apply the paints directly on the dry paper. Start from the top and as we do this, tilt your paper to create a slight angle. This will also allow the paints to flow downwards and excess water accumulating at the edge forming a line of bead. As you paint, continue to overlap the previous stroke as you move downwards. Be sure to reload your brush with more paints so that every stroke will be wet enough to form that bead at the end. It is important to have the collection of excess beads at the edge 
because this helps to keep the edge wet and it allows us to keep progressing after every layer of stroke is applied. It helps to prevent paints from drying too fast and forming harsh edges. As we arrive at the bottom, blot out the excess paints with paper towel or a dry brush. Otherwise, blooms might form as a result of excess moisture flowing back into the drying paints. At this point, the wash has started entering the drying phase. If we continue to paint beyond this stage, blooms will start to appear and disrupt the drying process. This is also known as the cauliflower effect. I have another video talking all about blooms and if you'd like to know more, do check out the link in the description below. So, it is best not to meddle with it and allow it to completely dry. And what if you would like to increase the value and darken certain areas? We can do this once the wash is completely dry. Don't forget to prepare enough mix. Then paint over the whole area from top to bottom with the same steps, making sure that the beads are present after every stroke. Wipe off excess moisture and there we have our neat and pretty flat wash. If you are painting on a really large area and worry that you may not have enough time with the first technique, you may consider using the second technique which is wet on wet. This is done by first pre-wetting the area with water. However, there are a few things to consider when using this technique. You would want to make sure that the paper isn't too dry or too wet during pre-wetting. Otherwise, it may affect your painting later. For more explanation on this, you may also check out the same video which I had mentioned earlier in the description below. For wet on wet technique, since we are dealing with a large area of wet washes, paper buckling tends to happen and you may end up with mountains and valleys on the paper which makes making a flat wash very difficult to achieve. It is recommended that you stretch your paper beforehand and use a paper that is 100% cotton with 300 GSM. For this technique, instead of using a heat brush, I went with the synthetic flat brush. Since we already have a layer of first wash on the paper, using a heat brush for the second layer would bring too much water to my paper and instead creating water puddles. As you paint, you'll notice that your wash may appear lighter and that's because the paints have been diluted by the water that's already on the paper. So do prepare a mix that is slightly stronger to compensate for this. Once you get all these preparation steps right, wet on wet is actually more forgiving than wet on dry. It gives you more time to play around and even return back to a painted area to make more adjustments. The paper can also be tilted in different directions to guide the paints to your desired area and even out the wash. The brush strokes are a little more visible and I like how this turns out because it creates movements of flow in the air. This technique is very useful when using multiple colors such as painting a sunset. It gives a very smooth blend between the color transitions. So both wet on dry and wet on wet have very different approach and ways of painting. I would suggest you give them both a try and see which works best for your painting style. So to summarize, make sure to use a large brush when covering a large area. Prepare enough paints before diving into your paper and finally, do remind yourself not to touch the paints when it enters the drying phase. That's all from me, I hope you'll find this tutorial helpful. Do comment below if there are any other topics you'd like me to cover and I'll see you in the next one. And happy painting!